My name is Allison Scanlon. Um, I'm sitting between two great kids. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Um, I would, before I get started, I wanted to make a comment about how we got into this process. When we found out that CPC was uh, having the possibility of being closed, it was very upsetting to our family. And I mentioned it to my son and my daughter-in-law, both who have gone through CPC. And I told them, we have a couple of different options here to get involved. We can uh, get a little bit involved. We can throw ourselves into this. But you need to understand that if we throw ourselves into this fight, your business is going to be out there for everybody to see. So I, I left the decision up to him as to how much and how far we went into this process. And he has a daughter, and uh, it's very important to him that she's four years old right now, and it's very important to him that if he had to place his child into a facility because she developed his and his wife's disabilities, that it would not be down at the Buffalo Psych Center, but that it would be out at the Children's Psych Center. So having prefaced that, I'm very proud of him that he has allowed us to put um, his life and his business out with the stigma that society holds on it. So I'm very proud of him. Uh, I'd also like to make it clear that this issue today to parents is not about outpatient services. I've heard a lot about outpatient services. Vernon was a huge participant in outpatient services, and they let us down time after time after time. We're not debating that today. We totally agree that outpatient services need to be revamped. There needs to be money put into it. That's not why we're here. We are here because there will always be children who need inpatient hospitalization. So our concern is once it's determined that they need it, what facility are they going to be placed in? That's why we're here. Um, we have been down quite a journey with Vernon's mental health. Uh, began at three, three years after uh, my husband and I adopted Vernon. We noticed that things were different, and uh, he was unable to focus. He was unable to finish anything that he started. He showed no attachment to anything, and he was unable to stay focused enough to learn. This was a problem. He was asked to leave two different um, preschools. He was asked to leave kindergarten early because he was so disruptive, and they just did not know how to handle him. They could not equip him properly. So we went down the road of Ritalin was the first medication, and what a difference that made in our family. Almost overnight, he was able to learn his alphabet, his numbers, and begin reading. So that to us was a real encouragement, but that was our first step down the road of mental, mental health. Um, by the time fourth grade came along, though, his size had changed, taller, more weight, and they told us, it's becoming a problem. He was starting to hear voices. And they had gone as high as they could with Ritalin. So we're like, OK, well, then fix him. Find something else that can work for him. Well, what a process. Because you're on a waiting list for a psychiatrist. You're on a waiting list for a psychologist. He was worsening, getting worse and worse, becoming more violent, violent outbursts, talking more about harming himself. And there was nobody to turn to. We were on waiting lists. That's what I'm talking about with, with outpatient services. Um, Vernon had several hospitalizations that he went through. One was at ECMC, CPAP, well before they had a children's unit there. So he was placed in with the adults. I had to stay with him. Um, there were prisoners in there who were shackled and troopers in there that were guarding them for the entire night. And he sat on my lap, and I just wrapped around him. That was our first experience with a psychiatric unit, and we were terrified by it. He spent time at the Bridges unit up at Niagara Falls. He spent time at Baker. He spent time, three different instances or um, admissions at Brylin. Um, he was injured while he was at Brylin because they're on top of each other. The kids are just basically sitting in the hallways looking for ways to get out. It's not a safe place for them. And he was injured there, and he had to go to Children's Hospital for a month. Uh, they thought they were going to have to um, amputate his toe. And that entire time he was there, he was in a zippered cage bed because they didn't know what to do with him at the time. You have to, you have to remember, this was a little while ago. 
So we began researching um, CPC because it was mentioned by the psychiatrist at Bry Lynn that Vernon was at the point where he was going to have to be admitted. So that's uh, the place that they told us about. We'd never heard of it. I've driven up east and west lots, never noticed it. Um, so we began researching it. And um, the question that I had was why, why is he on a waiting list? He had to stay at Bryland for four months waiting for a bed to open up at CPC. And it was well worth the wait. It was well worth the wait. He was not able to leave the facility at Brylin, and he had to look at the sun through the mesh wiring on his window. He was in a facility at Brylin with adults in the building. He could hear them screaming and hollering on the other floors, and he didn't know what was going on on those other floors. They wouldn't discuss it with him. We just tried to assure him that there were other patients and he would be fine. But he, he was afraid while he was there. So I remember um, being in attendance um, at a tour at BPC given by the Acting Commissioner Ann Sullivan and um, a group of people that came with her, and it was very enlightening. I saw all the proposed modifications that cannot possibly provide a better environment for our children. I listened to all that they had to say and saw what they had to show us. And when all was said and done, I asked the panel at the table one question. How are the children going to be better served at BPC than CPC? And there was silence. There was no answer. I asked, if the children are not going to be better served here, then why are the, you trying to replicate something that is already so successful? It makes no sense to parents. Children and their families will be safer and will be better served at CPC. The parking is safe for parents, siblings, and grandparents to come to visit. There are no worries of breaches in security that could harm children. The facility at CPC is like that of an elementary school. It's one story and it's surrounded by woods and fields. It is on Hope Drive for a reason. There are windows in every direction and they don't have bars on them or wire mesh on them and they have their own gym, weight room, indoor pool, rec room, art room, school, and auditorium. It is a fabulous facility. I remember the first Christmas that my son was at CPC. They had a Christmas program and for the first time in my son's life, he was on stage in a group and he was singing with his unit. He finally fit in, he smiled, and he was happy. I cried my eyes out sitting there next to his dad. That moment meant the world to me. It is a moment that never would have happened in a public school. Thanks. Um, I was also invited to attend a dinner that was made by his unit. Um, and I was able to, they had their own kitchen and they fixed meals for the parents. We were able to come in and partake in that. It was wonderful. I was able to be there every day. They afforded me that opportunity because I work nights. They afforded me the opportunity to come every day at lunchtime to spend time with my son, Vernon. And that was invaluable to me. And I could see the progress of the other children. Now, Vernon was there two years the first time he was at CPC because he was very complex in the things that were wrong. And they took the time to take him off of his medications very slowly. They observed him for a length of, of time, and then they started to uh, analyze what was actually wrong with him and what medications he should be on. And I'll tell you what, they got it right, because his last hospitalization ended eight years ago, and he's still on the exact same medications. He's not violent, he's able to function, he takes care of himself, he takes care of his wife, takes care of his child. They live with me in a residence out in Depew. Um, we attended family events such as craft days and picnics that they were able to have on the grounds in the enclosed areas, it was wonderful. And you got to see as a family that there were other people going through exactly what you were because at this point in your life you're thinking you are alone, alone. I always found it strange that OMH put out a statement that infrastructure doesn't matter, that it's the clinicians, it's the doctors, it's the staff. 
They are fabulous at CPC. I adore every one of them. I was greeted every day by name. They knew my child. They knew what he was up to every day. They made him obey. There were consequences if he did not. He had to earn levels in order to gain his independence. They taught him amazing things, but they also treated my husband and I. My husband was totally blind, and so we had a different circumstance with my son coming back into our household, having been violent at one point. So they really worked with us, and they healed us as a family. And I'll tell you what was critical to CPC versus any other facility we were in is that we had privacy. Every other facility, you are sitting at a table with other families. You're hearing their business. They're arguing with their children. Their children are arguing with their parents. It's not a pleasant situation to be in. It's very awkward. You're not accomplishing anything on your family time. You sat at a table with other people. At BPC, that is my concern, that they don't have anywhere near the space for privacy that they did at CPC. When we had family time, we were in a private area. When we had counseling, we were in a private area. We always had a private place to be a family. And it was absolutely priceless to us because we had experienced the opposite at so many other facilities. So this is a, a definite concern of ours. Um, you know, and I, I get it. There are troubling times in 2015. It's a time of stress for many American households who are trying to make ends meet. I understand the concept of brick and mortar savings, that when you put two facilities together, you can cut some costs. I get that. I understand the importance of working within a budget. I'm all about working within a budget. I understand the concept of doing more with less. But the question is, at what cost? I am a parent of a child who suffers, suffers from mental illness. I have been through the fear of the unknown, the stress of being a parent who is helpless in finding my child the care that he needs, the fear of watching my child deteriorate, and the worry of wondering if he will harm himself or others before help is secured. Unless you have lived it, you cannot understand it. Infrastructure mattered in his treatment and in the healing of our family. CPC saved our family. CPC saved my son. Our children matter, and moving them into BPC is a disservice to them and hinders their chance at a productive future. They do not need to look out the window and see what their future might hold when observing adult patients, and neither do their families. It instills fear. Leave CPC alone. Let the let it continue to heal and help children and their families. Find somewhere else to save on brick and mortar. There's other money in the budget. Our children deserve the best and they already have it at CPC. It's not about the money to us. It's about our children. It's about the children and what is best for them.